And welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for being with us here on Tactics on News Radio 1440. We appreciate you being with us through the break. And we do have a special treat for you today. We have a friend and colleague of mine that has agreed to do a guest spot for me and has been very generous with his time. You may remember about a week ago, one of the things that we talked about on the show was we had a physical fitness expert and somebody that helped us really maintain our, our physical fitness and our health. While we're quarantined, of course, that's a pretty big lifestyle change for everybody, so that can be difficult to do, but we thought it was equally important and maybe even more important to do the same thing with your mental health. So without further ado, I have on the phone Roxy Wish Wisham, I think is the way to say that. Thank you. Thanks, Caleb. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, thank you for being generous with your time. So one of the things that I wanted, and I kind of alluded to it in my introduction to you there uh, was to talk to you about some of the things that are going on and some of the the mental health issues that could come up in this uh, situation. But before we do that, I would like the audience, because I know you, but they don't know you, uh, just sure. talk a little bit about who you are and, and what you do for Faulkner and, and sort of your, uh, uh, you know, prowess as a mental health counselor and, and how all that got started. Okay, thank you, Caleb. I am a uh, mental health counselor at, in the counseling center at Faulkner University. I work with two other counselors there. Um, Michelle Bond is the director of that counseling center. Phoebe Dunn also works with us. Mm -hmm. And we work with primarily uh, college students, but we also provide counseling to faculty and staff at times. And, um, and it is a, um, it's an ongoing challenge there at any given time. There's a significant portion of the population that is wrestling with some mental health issues. Uh, we find in the college population, anxiety and depression are high on the list. And so yeah. those are the kinds of things that we deal with a lot. And as you might expect, during the time of any kind of a crisis, those escalate. Right. And so you could kind of speak generally on that if you wanted to, but also specifically with some of the things that are going on with the quarantine and, and people having to stay at home a lot, a lot more than they're used to not being able to go out or socialize as much as they used to. What are some of the mental health issues that could crop up? Maybe ones that had been either dormant and then just kind of rise to the surface because of this or ones that could crop up just basically from the added stress that comes from this. What are some of those health issues? Well, yes, thank you. That's um, some things just from being um, um, one of the wrestling matches that we have on an ongoing basis is determining whether we uh, live by an internal or external locus of control, uh, meaning uh, does my happiness come from within me or is my happiness determined by things that happen outside of me and happen to me? Mm -hmm. And it's important for us to develop an internal locus of control, but that's easier said than done. And in times like this, it feels like our freedoms are being taken away. And, and to some extent, that's true. Uh, you can't move about and uh, do the things that you could do before. Mm -hmm. And we're in a more confined space. For some of us, we are confined with multiple people, maybe multiple generations of a family, maybe people that are not family. And that brings about challenges. Sure. And so for those who've had some uh, issues of domestic abuse in the past, who have emotional abuse issues, who have um, addictions, who have addictions to substances or uh, pornography, uh, the boredom and the confinement and the um, added stress can cause those things to come back to the surface. And so it certainly will be exaggerated by all that we're going through. There's no doubt that there will be an increase in that. And that's one of the concerns, I think, from a lot of people in the mental health profession, that uh, the short-term and the long-term effects of what we're going through now, it's so different from what we've ever done before. And so those that, for example, if you have a, uh, maybe you've had a slight problem with alcohol abuse and it hasn't been labeled or identified as such, well, that could really surface now and it can become a, a strong habit that becomes something that causes uh, problems within families, causes financial problems. So it can become a big issue where it may not have been in the past. Yeah. And that's one thing that I was really concerned about. Uh, one of the things that you mentioned, uh, the, the last part of that was alcoholism, alcohol abuse and other addictions like pornography. Um, th that is really a concern with somebody that has a lot more 
idle time, especially somebody, I think that, you know, there've been a, a lot of people that have either been furloughed or laid off or people that get paid by the hour that maybe they still have their job, but they're not getting any pay right now because they can't work. And so you combine that with the extra spare time and, and, you know, like you said, boredom, that could be a really toxic combination. It really can. And so the, um, the extra time and the boredom and the stress, especially stress from financial issues or mm -hmm. pending financial issues, all of those can be like throwing gasoline on the fire. And so it really can accelerate uh, mental health problems that maybe have been, as you said, dormant for a while, uh, maybe never fully noticed. Maybe it's been a slight problem and no one has ever called you out on it. Um, but it can become more and more of a problem during times of stress. That's one of the things that stress does is it brings out, it squeezes out the good in us and it squeezes out the bad in us. Well, I've never actually heard it described that way, but that's interesting. I, I could see how really both of those could be true. So one of the things that, that we've talked about is some of the issues that, that crop up because of this or, or maybe rise to the surface. Are there any issues that could be formed specifically out of this? In other words, somebody that was mentally healthy beforehand that sort of develops a problem that wasn't really lying below the surface. Is that a possibility? Well, it is, uh, although I would say it probably is a matter of degree. And uh, when I worked at pretrial diversion, that's a, uh, a program for uh, first time felony offenders with the district attorney's office. Mm -hmm. I worked there for about seven years. And one of the sections of counseling that we did in that program was anger management. And so we helped people work through at the first stage of that. The first phase of anger management um, counseling is for people to come to the understanding that they have some anger that needs to be managed. Mm -hmm. And almost everybody's in denial about that. And so it's there. And so when we begin that, we'd help people keep an anger log and they would make a notation of every time they became angry during a day. And they would do this for a week's time and they'd come back together and we'd discuss it. And um, for so many of these, uh, they would come back. Almost everybody would have, they would rank these on a scale of a one to 10. Okay. And people would have twos and threes. It happened every time. Nobody ever had an eight or nine or 10. And some of these were people that clearly had anger issues, but they didn't recognize it. And so what they didn't understand is they were walking around at a three or four or five all the time. They were always angry at that level. So when they became angry and they thought they were going to a three, they were actually going to an eight. And so the same thing applies, I think, with our levels of anxiety. Most of us think we're not very anxious. Most of us think we do not worry very much. Um, and it's hard to say where the truth is. So it's hard for us, unless we have someone that's a, a really trusted confidant and someone that's an accountability partner, or you're talking to a counselor, then you probably don't know where your real level is. And so when you add these kinds of issues and anxiety stirs up, it may seem like it's going from a zero or a one to a three or four, but you may actually be going from a four to an eight. And it's, that's true on all these uh, uh, realms that we're talking about. Any of us can, can escalate and it can become a noticeable problem and a very visible problem to everybody around us. And sometimes, sadly, we're the last ones to recognize it. Yeah, I, one thing that I have noticed in the, the very limited amount of dabbling into the mental health uh, world and, and sort of looking at some of the things that they talk about, it seems as though awareness is a really big step. And that's something that is a lot harder to reach than most people realize. Yes, it is. And so few of us have really good accountability partners. Mm -hmm. um, most of us have friends who desire to be our friends. And as such, they're going to tell you what they think you want to hear because they want to be your friend. Right. So to have someone that will tell you the truth when it's not a flattering truth, most of us don't have many of those kind of friends. And so uh, that's the value of having a counselor, but it's also valuable to cultivate friendships and to be that kind of friend. Well, I want to be very careful not to chase too many rabbits here, but you just touched on something that I've actually been thinking on quite a bit recently. Uh, I've noticed a movement in people of, of the millennial generation and, and the Gen Z generation, uh, and I'm saying this as a millennial, that we tend to have a, a tendency to be sort of immunized to criticism, 
to the point to where if we do have a friend that is honest with us and tells us that we have a problem, we tend to, uh, the, the popular way to phrase that would be to cut the toxic people out of our life. And I think that's a really dangerous place to be to where anybody that criticizes you or tells you you may not be 100% perfect, that we just want to jettison that relationship. That I, I've been very concerned about that for a long time. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. Uh, I would say uh, as a baby boomer, it's easy, though, for us to cast stones at, at that generation. Sure. The truth is it's true of all generations. And and it's so rare. There, I have a friend at church that some five or six years ago came to me and he said, I want to ask a, ask a favor of you. And I said, OK. He said, I'm asking you, I'm asking my employer and I'm asking my wife to list three areas that I need to improve in where I have shortcomings and I need to improve. Mm -hmm. And I won't go into all the details of that and how that unfolded, but I'll just, but I mentioned that just to say that is the grand total of all the people who've ever asked me to do that. One, I'm, I've lived <laughs> two thirds of a century and one person has come up to me and asked me to do that. So that's not, it's not natural for us to invite criticism and to uh, ask people to point out our shortcomings in areas where we need to grow, but it is very healthy. And, uh, Athletes understand this. People in business understand this. They hire coaches and consultants to tell them where their shortcomings are. Um, people that are in your business will hire image consultants. People who are uh, writing books and want to go on tours will hire consultants. And so oh, yeah. they will invite people to criticize them. Critique is a better word, I guess. And so we should be doing that in our daily lives. It's just it doesn't come naturally. And we would rather hear the flattering things than the things that indicate I need work on myself. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think that's a natural human tendency. Uh, what about somebody, though, that in this quarantine, in the situation, is somebody like me that lives alone? What are some of the special uh, issues that could crop up with that? Because like you said, it, it'd be great to have a confidant and somebody that really cares about you, wants what's best for you, and is honest with you. But let's say you're somebody like me that is having to self-quarantine and, and doesn't really have somebody like that in the house. What are some of the things that we could do to kind of stave off any uh, unforeseen mental health issues that could crop up in our situation? That's a good point. But also there's a bright side. And, and the bright side in this case is you're sitting in a high tech studio that you've put together and, and have a, a great computer system. Uh, I'm talking to you using an iPad. All of us have the ability to be connected and today more than ever before. Now that's good oh, news. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But the good news is we can use that. There are so many ways for us to connect with others. And in some ways, those hard conversations are easier over FaceTime or, uh, or Google meet or whatever than face to face, face to face is better. And I certainly, uh, encourage that and I miss that. Um, but we can still stay socially connected even though we're physically distancing ourselves. And I think that's vitally important. And you, you bring up a good point that staying connected with people uh, in this time is very important. And talking to real people and getting an input and sharing opinions with real people rather than relying on local and national news to uh, uh, because they'll scare us to death if we watch that all the time. And so we need to talk to some people that are kind of sane and, and can be a little encouraging. Yeah, speaking as someone who spends a, a great deal of his time because of work watching local and national news, I can attest to that. If you, sure. I mean, if, if that's all you focus on, that's going to drive you yes. right up a wall. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we focused a lot on sort of the problems and observing the problems and, and some of the issues that can come up with it. Now I'd really like to focus on a few of the solutions because I know that you already yeah. mentioned staying connected and uh, using right. technology as sort of a, a means to do that, which I think is, is helpful. And it's something that has personally helped me. I mean, right. uh, I've, I've already had several uh, Bible studies over the internet since this thing started, right. uh, being able to communicate with people uh, just through hanging out. Uh, I've been playing video games with some friends online, that kind of thing. But uh, what are some of the other solutions? What are some things that a person that was watching this program could do to sort of uh, limit their, their stress, their anxiety, and some of the other situations they might be dealing with in this? 
Yeah, great question. And I, and you mentioned one of them. You mentioned at the beginning of your show, the opening. You mentioned having someone on who was a physical fitness expert mm-hmm. and talked about the importance of taking care of your health during this time. Well, I th- I would say that applies the same principles that apply with taking care of your physical health uh, apply with taking care of your um, mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual health. And, and those those basic principles are you have to do some of it every day and we need to have some kind of routine. It doesn't have to be the same routine as we had before we were all confined to our homes. But um, but there needs to be a little bit of a routine now sure. I'm saying that. But I'm getting up. I'm waking up much later than normal. I'm doing my morning run. Um, sometimes mid morning, sometimes it's almost noon when I do the run that I used to do as the sun was coming up. So we can make adjustments, but we need to have some kind of routine. And the more routine we have, I think the more mentally healthy and emotionally healthy we'll be. And so, uh, diet, sleep, exercise, uh, those things are the basics. They always are, but I think more so now. So if we don't watch that, there'll be, uh, there'll be some creep in all those areas. And, And I have posted several funny memes on my Facebook page about uh, I offer my bathroom scales for sale the other day because they uh, keep showing a different number every day. (laughs) And other ways of being, I I think having humor about the situation is good, but also being aware that we do, in fact, need to pay attention to. Am I gaining a few pounds? Am I? uh, And uh, developing ourselves intellectually. Uh, if, If I don't. Uh, I've told myself for years that I'm so far behind on the stack of books that I have to read because I just don't have time. Well, I have time now. And so I'm doing some of that and I'm still not doing that at the level that I would like to, but all of us need to be doing some things where we're developing ourselves intellectually and emotionally. And that's what will take care of our mental health. The mental health will follow if we'll just practice the discipline of doing things that we know we should be doing. Uh, easier said than done. And that's where having an accountability partner, even if it's just someone you check in with uh, through social media once or twice a week or maybe daily, uh, I think having someone that's a good partner to to uh, to sort of do this with, even if you're not physically with them. Yeah, I think that that's even something that I've observed personally, because uh, just speaking from my own experience, the first I don't know, week of this, which was spring break for us at the university, when all the students left, I basically just didn't have a plan. Like, I still did the show, so I had to do that every day. But other than that, I didn't have a whole lot of routine. And I found once I, and granted, I'm I'm still sleeping later than I normally do, uh, but once I set an alarm to where I had to wake up at the same time every day, that actually made a surprising difference in my energy level and a whole bunch of other things. So... Uh, yeah, I, th- I think you're right that that does help. In fact, I was reading a book recently by Jordan B. Peterson, who's a, a professor of psychology. And one of the things that he mentioned is that people discount the importance of routine because he said that he's had some patients that come to him that are at the level of psychosis that simply by getting a full night's sleep and eating a, a good breakfast in the morning actually their anxiety drops down to pre-psychosis levels just by doing that. Yes. Yes, no doubt. And uh, that and, um, and bringing positive people into your life Uh, that can be through reading. You can read books written by positive people, but also the people you're interacting with. And there's lots of that on social media. Now you can go on social media and find some horrifying stories and some, frightening stories of what's going to happen to the economy and how many thousands and tens of thousands are going to die. But you also, it's not on the internet. You can't can't find that anywhere on the internet. But then uh, my brother, who's a minister in South Georgia, he Mm. does, uh, he wrote a book uh, called journey to joy some years ago. And it's based on the, uh, the book of the Bible Philippians. And so every day for 30 days now, he's doing a positive message that's pulled out of that uh, book of Philippians and, uh, and his writings. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, just a positive message. It has some encouraging music that goes along with it. And it's maybe five minutes. So finding mm-hmm. those kinds of things that, uh, that provide some positive energy for us every day, um, it's, that's feeding yourself mentally and emotionally a healthy diet, just like we need to do physically. You need to eat some fruits and vegetables. You need to intake some 
positive messages and some healthy and challenging messages. Okay. Well, it sounds like a lot of this advice that you're giving is is good advice, of course, for right now while we're in the quarantine, but it sounds like a lot of those habits, it would be good to develop now so that we can carry them over into after all of this starts going back to normal. It is absolutely true. And, and those who have done it the best, who have uh, incorporated these as habits before, mm-hmm. will fare the best during this time. And those who have not and who've just sort of drifted are probably going to struggle the most. And so if we don't have that discipline, and if you're one of those people, uh, find someone who does have that. And people are offering help, but mm-hmm. they don't necessarily know how to contact you. Or they're, or all of us tend to be a little reluctant to insert ourselves into the lives of someone else. But but people want to help. And so if you're, if you're struggling with some of that, uh, find someone you can just sit down and talk to. And, uh, and I'm happy to be one of those. And uh, uh, I'm doing some of that with students via email and sometimes via Zoom sessions. And uh, so we're still doing some of that. And okay. it's good. To, it's good. That's rewarding to me. Uh, but that's, that's a form of helping. And so that's one message. Also, find a way to be a help to somebody else. Now, I when mean, it- you can cut somebody's grass. You can do something for somebody. Well, you know, I, I would assume with what you're talking about that there are quite a bit of people. Now, obviously, you're a, a counselor that works here at, at Faulkner University, but also that there would be quite a few mental health professionals around this area and around the state that are probably doing the same thing, meeting with clients and meeting with people over some kind of, you know, Zoom or, or some similar app that, that does that. Uh, just out of curiosity and you may not, but do you know of any resources that a person could go to maybe uh, something that that somebody could go to set up something if they feel like they maybe do have some mental health counseling needs? Yeah. Yes. There are a number in the Montgomery area. Pike road counseling is one that we've referred people to uh, Samaritan counseling on Zelda road. We send a lot of people there. It's a a spiritual based, but very good uh, licensed counselors. And, uh, and so there are a number that, and most of them are doing telehealth. Now they're doing some form of online counseling okay. and, uh, and they're struggling to meet the needs. And, uh, a lot of people that have been in that business for a while and been doing this for a while. Um, if, if you're my age, the technology is new and it takes a little getting used to, but, um, but most have made that adjustment pretty quickly and, uh, and we're, we're using it, um, and, and I think most people that are in the counseling profession are okay with laughing at themselves and saying, well, I didn't do that very well. Let's back up and try it again. So yes, there are lots of, uh, lots of counselors in the area. And, uh, and again, Samaritan that's on Zelda road, right in the middle of Montgomery and Pike road counseling that's out near the uh, intersection of Vaughn road and Pike road. Those are, those are good people and good, uh, good uh, businesses to go to. Well, excellent. Um, Just to kind of open up the floor to you, uh, is there anything that you would like to tell our audience in this time? Is there anything that maybe I wouldn't have thought to ask about or or maybe I would have left out? Is there anything that you'd want to convey that maybe we missed? Well, actually, I think, Caleb, your questions have been very well directed and uh, and I don't have a lot to add. Uh, Maybe just to uh, emphasize again, to learn to look for the positive, there's always a bright side. Everything, the darkest clouds have a bright side. In fact, uh, it took me a good many decades to finally come to the realization that the most beautiful sunrises and the most beautiful sunsets are those where there's some clouds. And the clouds are what cause the contrast and the, the varying colors. And that's what makes the most beautiful sunrises and sunsets. So it's uh, times of life when there's trouble, that's when some of the best beauty can emerge. And I'm seeing that in people now. So I would encourage people to look for that. Look for the helpers, look for the people that are doing beautiful things and good things and kind things and be one of those people. Emulate those people, attach yourself to people that are doing good things. And if if you're doing for others and if you're feeling and expressing gratitude for what is in your life, uh, you'll do fine. You'll be fine during this time. Uh, And that's during any time. If you if you have an attitude of gratitude and you develop uh, positive thinking and you look for the bright side, uh, life will be good. Yeah, I, I think that that's a skill that people really need to to be able to learn and, and understand because that's something that is prevalent, of course, throughout the scripture. I mean, everywhere 
that some of the the best stories of human triumph of uh, people coming to know God and and to being able to understand themselves typically all of that happens when things are really really bad in the world <laughs> I mean, yes. the, the greatest blessing that God ever gave mankind came through an innocent man being tortured to death. That's a, a pretty dark way for the greatest blessing to come through. And so I, I think that there's a lot of truth to what you were saying there. And interestingly, we're in the week where that's traditionally celebrated, the week of... Well, that's true. I didn't even think about that, but yeah. yeah. And so it is the very time that Jesus was going through that and, uh, and, and headed, uh, you know, a few days ago, this time he would have been uh, coming into Jerusalem with celebration and, and, and acclaim and then, uh, then criticized and uh, judged and beaten and, and ultimately crucified. And so we're leading up to the, the day of the week that would have happened for him. And so, yes, we're in that exact time, which is uh, maybe there's some irony there. And so uh, maybe. there's good uh, there. And, and obviously great good came out of that terrible time. And, um, uh, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes we can have bad times and, and we don't see the good or cause the good to come out of it. But God's promised us that, that uh, all things work together for good. If we love him and follow him and try to do what he has uh, instructed us to do, good will come out of even what seems to be bad times. And I believe that's the case with this virus and the, uh, the ramifications of that virus as well. Well, I certainly do, too. Thank you so much, Roxy, for being with us. Uh, Roxy Wisham, who is a counselor, a mental health counselor here at Faulkner University. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Caleb. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.